So I mentioned how our species, our trees, cannot keep up with the rate of climate change. The velocity of climate change is orders of magnitude higher than what trees can migrate at, the pace that they can migrate at. And so we have to help them. We have to move them around. And this is only going to amplify in the future, and they need our help. You know, we've gotten to the point where we can't, we can't just walk away. We've got to do something to help them migrate and be productive moving forward. And we can do that by retaining these old tree neighborhoods for enhancing regeneration, protecting the new seedlings coming up, uh, uh, housing the biodiversity, and protecting those carbon stocks. And this is going to be especially crucial in harsher environments where seedlings, just like our babies when, we grow, when they grow up in our little human families, they need our help, right? Um, those little seedlings, we're going to need the help of their mother trees. And so we, and especially on harsher sites where there's, there's more risks involved. And we can migrate these genotypes from, from warmer to, to colder climates as climate changes. We need to do it. It's, it can be successful, but it's going to be more successful if we leave the old trees around. In fact, we could be, you know, it could be a disaster if we don't keep those old trees around. It would be like, you know, creating a, like a parking lot to try to put your kids out on it. You just don't want to do that. You want to have a nice, healthy environment for them to be moved into. And how you retain those old trees, the patterns, it's all got to be based on the land. Watching the land, knowing the land, seeing what's going on, seeing how it's changing. That means having people on the land and knowing the land. It, do, it means getting out of our cities and going out and actually being part of the management of our forests. And finally, doing experiments like what I've done with the Mother Tree Project is wonderful for young people, obviously, for students. Um, they can go be part of it and feel like they're agents of change. The, the, I can't emphasize how important that is. But also we can go look at these experiments and we can say, okay, that worked and that didn't work and that worked before, but it doesn't work now. So we can use them to calibrate ourselves. We can use them to create models to project into the future and validate those models. And lastly, to motivate us to change because when we, when we can see what, what, what's positive and, and helpful, then we can, we can emulate that and build on it.